Let's get my next guest out. The neighbouring people bandy the phrase national treasure around like cheap aftershave. I want you to gaze upon the very real thing. It's Mr Danny Baker. Yeah. Thank you. See, Thank so you. you. Good got evening, lost. everyone. Even though there's only one way to go, I thought you might have got confused in it. Oh, I've uh, worked it for 11 years, this building. Oh, well, you used to do, uh, when this was London Weekend television. That's right, exactly. Yeah, man and boy, man and boy. Wow. Uh, look, it's great to have you here. You know well, I'm thank you. The headlines last week, you would have seen it. <laughs> Danny spectacularly uh, quit his uh, BBC Radio London well. show, the weekly show, uh, in grand style, uh, with a, a, a lengthy tirade against I your know. Em former employees yes. on air. So, uh, what triggered that? What, what triggered? Uh, well, I'm no, I've never been very good at um, uh, authority. And uh, I just think sometimes it's just, it, this job, job's an, uh, no different from anyone else's. And so I'm told by a, a series of weasels, pinheads and dim bulbs <laughs> that a show that is doing terrific on the uh, network, it's not like it's in decline, you get these shows and yeah. some hotshot is coming in to take <laughs> it over. You know what they did to my show? They actually just got rid of it and extended the show before it and brought back the show after it. So just <laughs> swallowed it up. And they said... And I said, but it's... It's, it's one, two, three, four, five on your listen again. And, you know, it's a local radio show in the end. You know, it's a London not... radio show. So, yeah, so people listen again. It was always the yeah, top of the charts. Yeah, done well. And, it, and, and as long as they left us alone, and because and they can't bear it, and like in any job, they want to interfere, you know, and a radio show is a dialogue between me and the audience, and I've got much more respect, in total respect for the audience, none for management. But because you come <laughs> in every day and you do it, in the end, why won't you go out to Haringey and talk about, you know, dog crap on the pavements or traffic? <laughs> and I also think, because it's not entertaining. You don't have to beat people over the head all the time. Most of media today operate from the <laughs> idea of if you're not scared, we're not doing our job. Yeah. And just sometimes people like to talk goofy and nothing. Yeah. So when they said to us, you know, oh, we're getting rid of it, but not for seven weeks, and we don't want you to say anything. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, I, I don't write, I don't write <clears throat> caustic emails. I'm not somebody who does a waspish piece in The Guardian. I said, are you nuts? You, you weasel. <laughs> and I had a good job and before the thing. And I, I don't... I, I, I think it was good radio anyway. Yeah. And I think on behalf of everyone who's ever wanted to say, take this job and shove it, sometimes you go into the abyss and worry about what's going to happen afterwards. <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> What's amazing is the timing for them to do that is because they must have known that next week you're being inducted know. into the Radio Hall of Fame. I know. It, so at any it, given time to say we have someone we're going to get rid of, that's not I, the time well, the to thing do is, it. That's very nice and, and, and great. And, uh, uh, and I'm being inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. And I remind you that radio is only two vowels different from rodeo. It's not, <laughs> it's not like getting an Oscar. But it's very nice of them. Of course, I'll do it. But, and you know, they shower you rewards, but you, you can't put them on a table and eat them. No. And it's extraordinary that I <laughs> seem to be, you know, everyone's radio, oh, he does this and, you know, but actually give him a show, no. Why? Because he might be a nutcase. And I don't know that, where you go from there. So, yes, I'm accepting the highest honour while not really having a job on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've still got the weekend show. You still do Oh, that. yeah, the weekend yeah, show yeah. goes okay. along. Yeah, that's uh, all right. But they're talking to you. Now they're saying they are talking to your agent or they're talking about getting you back on to that show again or what, what's oh, the I'm actual... fine, but the BBC's a weird place. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's not <laughs> one group of people, is no, it? No, it's not. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've got no beef with them. I've got no beef with anyone anymore because yeah. I say it's cathartic. Yeah. I'll see you as other fellas, but in other walks of life, people have stand-up rows. In the media, it becomes columnist fodder, and yeah. I was asked, would I write columns about it here or talk about it? No, it was over. Yeah, I yeah. told them directly, yeah, yeah. and, and they're just not used to that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know what's interesting is you are very much, it strikes me, you're, you're kind of very present in the moment always in your life. Yes, Would that yes, be a fair yes. I've got no past, no yeah, future. You enjoy <laughs> your life very much. Uh, Danny has a book out, and... Um, you know, lots of people bring books out this time of year. This is the one I would wholeheartedly recommend. If well, you're thank get you one, very much uh, indeed. It's, it's funny, it's made me laugh all the way through so far. But, you know, if there's one character that comes out this as the most memorable, and there's so many memorable, I think it's probably your dad. Yeah, uh, he mailman is. Who you call Spud. Everyone called Everyone him called Spud. Everyone called him Spud. He was a docker, wasn't he? Yeah, my man's a docker called Spud, and, uh, yeah, of course it's a fan letter to him, but he was a very extraordinary bloke, and what we've been talking about with the catharsis in the radio is entirely... His way of doing things. Uh, I, I physically started to look like my old man, but he's extraordinarily funny, and, and he was always. And when I was even on TV, when I used to be on telly, uh, so uh, <laughs> but, I know I might be again soon, and nobody wants that. So uh, 
uh, uh, I used to walk down the street and people would... Doo -doo, and I'd go, hey, does I not you, your old man? Spud boy! And everyone, <laughs> everyone knew me, old man, uh, because, he, yes, he was a dock organiser, he was a union organiser, he was a very, very, very uh, explosive type. There's a whole thing about my, my sister brought home one of her first true boyfriends, and, and he was... And he, uh, uh, it, it can sound bombastic, but it's not. I think a lot of people's parents are like that, and a lot of the time we hear now... You have to have ogres in your books. You have to have pain cupboards. It wasn't like that. You took notice of your mum and dad, and you always knew if you risked something new, like my sister's boyfriend did, or my brother when he bought a Donovan cap, you had to run it past the old man, and there wasn't a lot of chance of it getting past the old man. <laughs> so, and, and forgive me, but he'd come down the stairs like my brother in this Donovan cap. My old man would go, the fucking hell you got on your head? <laughs> and, and, and you... Well, it's, Donovan wears one, does he? Well, give it fucking back to him. You ain't going to... <laughs> That kind of... I know, I know it's... It, our house was full of swearing and, and it's not... There's a time and a place. And when this... When my sister's boyfriend knocked at the door and he said, Hello, Sharon there. And he said, uh, Who are you? So he said, I'm Colin. Uh, I've come to pick Sharon up. The only thing you're picking up, son, is your chimp from the pavement as you go now. <laughs> and he had a repartee and a snappiness about it. And he, he wasn't a monster. He just was very much of a type you don't yeah. really see anymore. But out of all of it, it's a grounding thing, cos you can have highfalutin tales about Hollywood, but it's a very grounding thing to have someone in your, in your family like that. Uh, and it was a big, big family. But the stories I like best in this, I like all the stories, but the stories about the kids you grew up with, and some of them are, are funny and sad at the same time. I'll tell one very quickly. Uh, and this is a story in the book which is kind of tragic, and it is, but anyone knows it, like... You, you, you know, you, you deal with it at the time in different ways. Uh, and a friend... There was a period in about 1968 uh, when mohair trousers were really popular, but we were only 9, 10 and 11. Remember, mohair trousers, what yeah, a drawback. Yeah, yeah. I felt like the skin had been took off your legs they and sand rubbed in. Yeah, yeah. But there was no fashions for kids of 12, 13, 14. Yeah. There was one shop in Deptford High Street said they were going to get kids-sized mohair trousers in, and my mate Lenny said they're getting them in, Nelson's, on Saturday. He got there first and got the only pair of ones that were gold and turquoise. They were gold, they shimmered, gold and turquoise. The rest of us had to do plum and blue, right? <laughs> uh, uh, but Lenny had these one trousers. He paid 12 quid for them and saved them. 12 quid, in, you know, you're that age in 1968. Anyway, he loved these trousers and he was waiting for the right time to wear them. Cut to one of our other gang, uh, uh, just call him Barry. Barry uh, was just, as a lot of us did, knocking around this old bunch of houses that were condemned. And... At one time, Barry went upstairs in his house, and we're all, like, say, 11, 12, and he fell through, and he, and he got killed, Barry. He, he, he got killed and went through, and it was an awful thing. Of course it is, and I, and I only tell it because there's light and shade in the story. And a week previously, Barry had said to Lenny, I've got a wedding coming up. I'll borrow your trousers. And they were best mates, and he said, oh, no, I don't. He said, go on, borrow. I'll give you a pound. So he gave him a pound, and he borrowed him his trousers. Now, I'm not going to say when he, when he got tragically killed, he was wearing those trousers, but Lenny... Uh, went to see him, uh, we, we all did, you know, you pay your respects, and he was kind of laid out. What do you think he was wearing? They laid him out in. <laughs> I know, I know, it's, it's bad. So Lenny's walking along, I'm going to stand up if that's all right. So Lenny's walking along and he's, he's got to the beer and of course it's, and he's gone, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. And of course they've gone, Lenny, we all feel him. No, no, um, it's, it's, it, it, and he's, so he's turned around to us, he's gone, me strides. Me strides. <laughs> and I said, oh, Lenny, we all threw. He's going, no, oh, no, he can't go down the hole in the strides. He can't go down the hole. <laughs> well, Lenny, uh, the poor kid did go down the hole in Lenny's best trousers. That he paid, I paid 12 quid for them. And afterwards, when anyone said to Lenny, uh, you know, anyone know we can get my wear trousers? He said, I know we can get a pair. We <laughs> <laughs> don't have a shovel. But, so it's... <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's a tragic story, but... It, it, it's, it's true, and the greatest yeah. thing I'm going to say about the book is how comes these stories, you know, I don't believe it. Well, it's true. Yeah, and, yes, yeah. you can bleed and say, oh, well, that's awful. Yeah, yeah. it is, but it, it's a pretty good story as well. Uh, there's so much... There's so many memories... Cos we're a similar age, uh, there's so many memories that I have of this period which you've reminded me of, but in particular, though, something which I never had access to, and you got taken out... You, you had an older sister yeah. and an older brother, and they would go out places, and your sister took you with her boyfriend, the guy we mentioned, this, I think, in the yeah. White Crimson to go and see... When you were just a young boy, uh, still, yeah. or a youngish man, to go and see hair. Yeah, this is the same period. And all anyone ever said about hair in 1968 was they take all their clothes off halfway through. <laughs> That's all anyone knew about it, right? But everyone said, oh, no, it's about breaking down barriers. So I thought, yeah, we're going to see hair because it's a great rock musical. And I you, bet they you, don't... Were, you were how old? I'm uh, 1968, I'm, 10, I'm nearly 11. 
So I'm going with my sister and her boyfriend to see hair at the Shaftesbury Theatre, and it's got all this thing, all oh, they take their clothes off. But I'm thinking, well, I've heard about it, but I think what they do is it'll be brief and the lights will be down. Yeah. Well, we had three great seats right on the aisle, and ladies and gentlemen, they don't turn down the lights. It is not brief. I, I don't remember what part it is they they get their clothes off. I think it might be let the sun shine in, but that seems an, an odd cue for getting your bum out, doesn't it? But the, uh, so, and let the sun shine in. Now, I'm with my sister, and there it is. There's all these equity-paid hippies just freaking throwing... And I'm with my sister, and I'm, you know, ten, and Sharon's, and she's thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. And so we're looking straight ahead, but thinking, let it be over, let it be over. It wouldn't be over. <laughs> then, even worse, down into the audience come the cast. <laughs> Let the sun shine in. Let the... They all come along the aisle and stand at the end of the rows. Now, I've got an aisle seat, and I'm ten, and we're looking at this empty stage now. <laughs> and there's this bloke here, and it's going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards. But, and so, Sharon's... And I'm swallowing something hard and jagged. And I'm looking straight, let the sun shine in. <laughs> and then, ladies and gentlemen, it brushed my ear. <laughs> it brushed my ear. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, no, oh. if this is the new way, you know, give me the sound of music, give me South Pacific. <laughs> but someone give me a flannel. <laughs> because... And, and we got home and it's never been mentioned again in our house. <laughs> so why would you? And it, whoever that fellow was, yeah, uh, uh, talk about member of equity, bang, <laughs> it rushed my ear, 1968. Uh, but you survived. I, 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 I'm still a fan of musical theatre, which shows you how broad uh, my back is. Um, the book is great. It's called Danny Baker Going to See in a Sieve. It's only the first part of Danny's remarkable and very... Uh, entertaining life story. But we should just check your, your health and stuff. There was the, the other big story you in your life. It was, yes. Was, I had uh, cancer the, of the head and neck. Uh, there's no getting away from that. But, uh, uh, yes, it was for eight months and I'm giving off sparks. I couldn't be better. I literally couldn't be better. It's a horrible process, but the great thing is science just takes care of it. Takes care of it. They tell you what's going to happen. Doesn't always work out that way. It worked out fine for me. And, you know, the people over there at Guy's Hospital also dedicated the book to. Yeah. I'm not one of them who won't, ever wants to sell a book on the back of my illness, but as you've asked, I'm fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, no, no. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just ironic that you got your voice back and they took your show away. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I don't know what they're uh, doing. Yeah, you know the great thing about it is you are, I said it earlier, you are the unsinkable Danny Baker. You. I know you'll Thank always you. be doing radio, and the reason you'll be always be doing radio is because you are, I think, perhaps the greatest radio performer we've Oh, have. man, I like They're so it. nice here. Mr. Thank Danny you very Baker, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Very funny. There's a hair story. Thank you. I know. I know. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, please don't go away. John Masters, I'll be talking to Catherine Jenkins, and we have Sire still to come, Wait. so see you in a couple of minutes. <laughs>